Ten foods you could eat more of. Hello, this is Chris speaking from Wake Up. And today's video is about 10 foods you could eat more of. We are bound to this body. You are not your body, but you are also not your body. So it's a good idea to take care of it and eat healthily. Apart from the usual stuff that everyone has heard about already, like kale and spirulina and shiitake and whatnot, all kinds of hip superfoods, I want to talk about a few foods that are really good to eat regularly. They will strengthen your body, your health, your immune system, your blood, cleanse your digestive tract and so on. First of all, okra. Okra is a very interesting little vegetable. It tastes really nice if you fry it. If you cook it, it will be kind of slimy. It will be still uh, healthy, but it has a very, very weird texture. Well, if you fry it in a pan, uh, you won't have this slimy part. Just cut them in half and then fry them and then you can add all kinds of um, spices and sauces. Also, when you buy them, make sure that they're fresh. They should break easily. If they're kind of uh, flexible and soft, don't buy them. Also, don't buy the big ones, buy the small ones. Especially the tips. On the tips, you can see if they're fresh. And they shouldn't be black. They should be fully green. No dark parts. Secondly, artichokes. That's also not really new. They're good for your liver and your gallbladder and your thyroid gland and so on. And they're really, really tasty. You can cook them and then eat them with a vinaigrette. French dipping style. Both your liver and your thyroid glands are two organs to whom you should be really, really nice. Next is black salsify. Very, very strange vegetable. I recommend, I recommend it to you to cook it first and then peel it. It's a real mess to peel it first. But once you cook it, it's easy to get the peel off. And it tastes a little bit similar than artichokes, actually. A little bit like a mixture of potatoes and artichokes. Really nice. Next is salsify. Not black salsify, but salsify. Looks similar, tastes similar. I think it tastes even better. Both of them are really, really tasty. And the salsify is very rare. Best you grow it yourself. Otherwise, you can only get it in autumn for a few weeks a year only. But it's super, super top healthy. Same thing. Cook it first. Peel it afterwards. Next is bitter melon or bitter gourd or momordia. There are at least two types. They're really, really good. One is more available in India and Bangladesh and so on, the other one more in Africa, same thing. This is health distilled in pure form. Unfortunately, it's so bitter, it tastes inedible. If you eat this, all your taste buds tell you, no, don't eat this, this must be poisonous, <laughs> but it's not, it's really healthy. Don't chuck it into any other dishes, it will make everything bitter just prepared by themselves as a side dish. Like okra, it should still be firm and there shouldn't be any large seeds inside. So, now we had five vegetables, let's look at some fruits. Here again, everyone knows that berries, all kinds of berries are really healthy and also apples, yeah? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. But this is only true for sour apples, not these new kinds of new, super sweet, pink lady kind of abominations. But now let's have a look at some rare fruits. First of all, papaya. Papaya is well known, but a lot of people don't eat papaya. In the tropics, papaya is a super fruit 
for many reasons. One of them is that it's available all year round. It's super tasty and it's full of enzymes and other goodies. And you can eat it in any stage of ripeness. You can eat it raw. Green papayas, nice salad, or even cook it. Next is pink dragon fruit. It's strange fruit. It's almost tasteless, doesn't taste like anything. And it's very expensive. But it's good for your liver, so eat it. The same goes in a lesser degree for any other dragon fruit or cactus fruit. Next is rice. Eat more rice. Especially brown rice, black rice and red rice. And lastly meat. Organic meat of any animal you like. Of course in some countries, I just like this picture, in some countries it's a horrible offense to eat beef. So you don't have to eat beef of course. And you don't have to eat meat at all. I was a vegetarian myself for quite some time because I try everything out before I recommend it and I found out that doesn't suit for myself. It's not my kind of diet but I only buy organic meat of the highest quality and as much as possible locally because it doesn't make sense to eat growth hormones and antibiotics and so on let alone the gruesome way most animals are kept and slaughtered. So we don't want that. So only buy it from a butcher where you know where the meat comes from and that the animals really had a life before they had to die to make you happy. And as I have said before, I've never met a single enlightened person who did not eat meat. Doesn't mean that you have to eat it, but also it doesn't mean that you have to make a big fuss around it. But they are living creatures who are just as valuable as yourself. So if you eat meat, only buy meat from organic local farms who are usually even happy to show you around. The organic rule is of course true for all those 10 foods. Of course, you should only buy organic apples because the best things are in the peel, in the skin, and if this is full of pesticides and herbicides, not so good. And the very best thing is, of course, to grow your own vegetables. As we've talked about in the sustainable farming and regenerative farming video with Marcus, the future model of producing food is more or less the old way of producing food. And the less you are dependent on huge chains, industrial chains of producing and selling food, the better. Another really nice way are these small cooperatives where a hundred people or so are ordering food every week from the same small farm. They have a kind of membership for 60 or 70 bucks a month and then they get what's there. So the more you support these kind of small enterprises, the better it is for everyone.